Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we took care of our traditional cutscene. We used some pretty simplistic methods of doing so, but we took a look at a traditional cutscene. Uh, we took a look at the cameras that you could bring in, etc. But we, we did our cutscene very, very simplistically. We're going to today take a look at an interactive cutscene or an interactive cinematic. And basically what I want to happen is I want the character to be able to, to trigger an event that's going to occur. The character is then going to lose control for a few minutes, have a have a special window come up, allow some inter uh, some dialogue or some interactivity between the, the event and the character, and then give the character back control again. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, so let's get started with this episode. There's a few things that I want you guys to do uh, when I say to pause <laughs> and go through and build yourself a couple of things. I'm not going to go over the building of what my special event is, and I'm not going to go over building the... the um, the uh, GUI that we're going to use again, the HUD that we're going to use again. We've done that in earlier episodes. I'll show you how I built mine. You guys go through and build your own afterwards, okay? As far as the special events concerned, basically what I want to do here is create an event where the character will walk up to it, and when the character gets within a certain distance based on a, a collider interaction, uh, then we're going to launch a special event. And... Uh, <sighs> I'm going to show you how I did mine. There are a bunch of different ways. Basically, you're going to have to go through and use the concepts I show you to write an appropriate script that's going to allow you to, to go through your interactive event. All right, I'm going to write a special script for it here based on the idea that I had. And afterwards, you're going to have to take those same ideas and you're going to have to apply them to your individual special event or your interactive cutscene. Okay, there are a couple of things that we're always going to do. We're going to you know, make sure your character can't move, etc. Uh, we're going to put our camera in the right place, or in this situation, we're going to use a built-in camera. We're going to take a look at that today. Uh, we're going to use an additional camera. Uh, so where there's a few things that we're going to do over and over again, but the actual meat of your individual scripts are going to be different, just like with your intro, where the meat of your intro, the, this, the traditional cinematic you made, is going to be different than what I've done. Uh, so... I'm going to show you the basics here, and then you guys have to apply what you've learned to your own cinematic ideas. Okay, first of all, what you need to create is some kind of object or or what have you that's going to set off the event. Now, basically here, I'm not sure if I actually gave you this asset, and it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, I'm using this as my central computer. When the character walks up to it, uh, it's just basically a model. That's all it is. You could use a sphere. You could use a cube. You can use anything you want in order to represent your, your, your actual object that you're going to be interacting with. If you want to put a character here, that's great, too. Otherwise, guys, just build whatever you want. In this case here, I've slapped this this uh, special computer in here. Okay, that's all I've done. Uh, and like I said, I don't know if I gave you this asset or not, but you know, if I didn't, it doesn't matter, guys. Just put anything you want in there. The other thing I built was this thing that I called Comp Canvas. You can call it what a Cube Canvas. You can call it whatever you want, whatever you're interacting with. Give it a special name. Okay, give it some kind of name that you're going to be able to identify it as for this particular event. And this canvas setup is very, very simple. If we take a look at it, let's go into 2D here. Let's just focus on it. Um, the the camera, the, the canvas itself is very, very simplistic. All I've got in my situation is I've got the canvas itself. I've built a panel, which is this kind of grayed out area, and it kind of gives this kind of grayed out look around the edges. Um, to my upper canvas, I made sure that I added in a canvas group, and that gives me access to the alpha, just like we used in when we were building our, our traditional cinematic. We used the alpha. If I set it to zero, we can't see it anymore. So make sure you've got yourself a canvas group. Um, the panel is not necessary, and neither the buttons, to be honest. But in my situation, uh, there's going to be an interaction between the character and the computer, and the character's going to have a choice between a negative, sorry, a negative and a positive event, all right? And based on the button that the character presses, uh, there's something else is going to occur. So that is the interactivity I'm looking for from this particular section. I just want the character to have to interact in some way with the event, not just lose control. They're going to lose control of their character. They're going to listen to a little speech that's made, and afterwards they're going to interact with this in some way. So this could be used for dialogue or anything else like that. 
okay guys so go through right now pause the video right now go through and build yourself those two objects something you're going to interact with and this simple canvas all right and when you're done make sure that you turned off your canvas we're just going to turn it off we're going to set the we're going to disable it and i'm also going to go down into my canvas group and i'm going to make sure that my canvas group alpha is set to zero okay so once you've got that done you've got it set up come back here and we will we'll start again all right guys see you in a minute okay guys welcome back hopefully you got your stuff done uh now we're going to go through and we're going to add in the code that's going to be required for to for this special event to occur. Uh, and I, like I said, I don't think you have all the assets. I don't think you have all the audio or anything like that. I don't think I put that into the into the actual download that you've got. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. For this situation, it doesn't really matter. All we're trying to do is set up the event. My audio and, and this particular asset is of you no use to you at all, particularly if you're building your own style game. Okay, so let's start right here. Let's uh, let's start off by creating a brand new game object. I'm going to say create. I'm just going to create an empty game object. Then I'm just going to zero it out for now to make sure it's at the appropriate location. And what I want to do, I don't want to add very much to this. I want to add a brand new component. I want to add a physics component. And I want to add myself. I'll add a box collider. It doesn't really matter what I add. And basically, this box collider is going to be a trigger that my character can enter and then enter into the actual special event okay so let's make this thing wide enough let's make it let's say too wide uh, let's make it uh, 10 tall I don't know and let's make it uh, 10 deep all right and let's move it up to five okay so that is that is my trigger that my character can actually set off if my character walks into this if my player walks into this then they're gonna set off this special event I'm just gonna put it where I think it should go let's say I put it right there it doesn't really matter where I put it I just want it in some location that when my player enters into it uh, they are going to set off the event itself that's all okay uh, to this special event I'm gonna add a component I'm gonna add myself a brand new script all right, and for lack of a better name, I'll simply call this for now special event. Special event. All right, and you guys probably want to have it, give it a particular name. If you have a number of these special events associated uh, with with uh, with your game, you're obviously going to want to have a number of these special uh, these these different uh, functions. All right, each one might be different. In some cases, they might be the same, where you only have the one interaction. But in other cases, you're going to have multiple interactions. You're going to have multiple things that you want to occur. So you might have to write a new script each time. If hopefully you can set it up modular enough that you're going to be able to reutilize your your special event script anyway let's open it up boom, boom all right and it opened up over here so let me bring it over uh, there we go all right and our special event script is going to be using a number of different things uh, our special event script is going to be is going to be taking a look at at uh, the actual event that's occurring and then reacting to the player actually entering into the event okay so let's go over here uh, oops, not up there. What am I saying? I'm not going to add anything up there. Let's add it right here into our the top layer of our class, all right? And I'm going to need a number of different things. I'm going to add a, a number of different public uh, variables here. First of all, I'm going to add a camera. And as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to set up a special event camera in this case here so we can look and see how we actually go about switching cameras. If we have a game camera and we want to switch to a brand new camera, up until this point here, um, we've been using the same camera that we're using for our, di our dynamic camera has been used for our arc shot and, and what have you. And I don't want to do that. I want to switch cameras in this case here. All right. The second thing I'm going to add is a public uh, reference again to a camera, uh, and this is going to be actually be our game camera. All right. And that way we're going to be able to turn off things that we don't need or turn on things that we actually do need. Uh, the other thing I want to add in here is a canvas, and interestingly, I'm pretty sure I have to add in here using Unity Engine dot UI to have full access to my canvas. All right. So there's my there's that. Uh, let's add in here our canvas. So again, it's going to be a public reference uh, to a canvas. A canvas. And we'll call this the event canvas. And basically, this is going to be the, the canvas that we created earlier that's going to allow us to have the interactivity between our character and the actual event itself. I'm going to add in here, um, I'm going to add in here a, uh, um, a public uh, do I need this right now? I need this for sure. I'm going to do here a public audio clip. No, you know what? I'm going to have it here, a public audio clip. Audio clip. Uh, and if you don't have this section, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to call this event audio. 
All right. So when my character first walks into the walks into the uh, event, the event audio is going to play. I'm going to have a public audio clip uh, that I will call the the uh, positive result. Positive result. Uh, and I'm going to have a public audio clip. Now, obviously, guys, you could have done this whole thing uh, with with an array if you wanted to. Lots of lots of ways to simplify this. Uh, we'll call this a negative result. All right. So, in the case of a negative button push, I push the, I play the negative audio, and in the case of the positive uh, event, I play the positive audio. Uh, the next. Um, if you really wanted to have something occur, uh, if you wanted to have a positive or negative result, you could have a public uh, link to a positive and negative result. All right, I'm not going to bother doing this right now. You might want in the case in the case of my game, what I had set up, the game I, I showed you guys, what I had set up is if the player entered uh, 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 answered in the negative, then we killed him. Okay, and you could do that here. Uh, we haven't actually created yet the explosion that would be allowed to, that would allow you to actually blow up the character like I do in my game. So I won't even bother dropping that in there. All right. If you wanted to have it set up so you could kill off your player or whatever, you can access your your player and you could you could kill him off using. I think we have our health and that kind of set up for the player. I don't know if I put it somewhere. I, don't, I doubt I put it in player movement, but I might have because I'm being pretty sloppy with this <laughs> with this current. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot I need that with this current uh, series. Anyway, guys, I won't put in any kind of any kind of happening that happens after this event. All you're going to do is you're going to answer in the positive or the negative, and we're going to get out and, and have control of our character again. Okay, we're going to need access to our player movement script, our player movement script, and we'll simply call this the player movement. All right, the player movement, and that's going to give us the ability to toggle on and off our actual uh, our actual. Uh, character movement because we don't want our character moving about during this particular section. Uh, we're going to have a link to an audio source, which we haven't yet added, added yet, but an audio source uh, that we'll call my AS. Okay, and we'll have to add an audio source to our actual object. And lastly, we're going to have a link to a game object that we'll call the player. The player. Okay, that's all good. Uh, and let me just file save this for now. Save. And let's head back over into Unity for one second here. Boop. And let's add on to our actual, so that everything worked out there, everything's there. Let's actually add on to here, add, and we're going to add in an audio source to this particular event. All right. And uh, with that being the case, uh, we're not going to set anything up to, to play. There's not going to be anything in here. It's not going to play on Awake, I don't think, right now. I think we'll actually activate it once we hit this area. Obviously, we'll do something like that. Okay. Great. After that, guys, now we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to set up the individual code to actually read everything in. All right, guys, after recording this video, uh, it actually ended up being about 45 minutes long, which is way too long. No one is going to watch it if it's 45 minutes long. I don't want you guys to have to re-watch things to try and find out where you were, etc. So I'm going to break this up into two different episodes. I'm going to end it here. It's a really odd place to end it, but I'm going to end it here after about 20 minutes, and the next one will be about 25 minutes long. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Go on to the next video. I'm really sorry I had to do that, uh, but it was way too long. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.